in your same son. Let me tell you how you hold out. You hold out through prayer. That's how you hold out. You just don't do any old thing, but you hold out through prayer. You seek in his face. Amen. Come on here, Deacon. I'm trying to get with this prayer. We pray for all those who are sick and shut in this. We pray for all our situations, everything that's going on in our land. Amen. We pray for even the individuals who are having birthdays this month. Amen. We pray. Prayer changes things. Amen. Amen. Let's give some love to our deacon as he comes. Let us pray. First and foremost, let us just hold on ourselves. Let us just open our hearts that we may just have a line to Jesus. Father God, humbly we come in the precious name of Jesus to Christ. First and foremost, Father God, say thank you, Lord. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for all the many blessings you more than our lives, seen and unseen, Father God, as we travel the dangerous highways and byways, as we, Lord God, go to and fro. Lord God, as we just open our front door, we thank you, Lord God, for your prevailing protection, Lord God, in every avenue of our life. Father God, we bless your name this morning, Father God. I humble myself, come and pray for the sick and the shed and the afflicted and the prosperated. We let us say, Father God, we lift up those who are all celebrating their birthdays, Lord God. We lift up the sick and the shed in, Lord God. Father God, I'd just like to take a moment and thank you, Father God, for 39 years, Father God. Bless you, Lord God. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Lord God, as we all look at one another, look at Lord God, and see how wonderful your blessings have been in our lives. Father God, as we bless your name this day, Lord God, we pray for our pastor, Reverend Derek Hills, Chris Hill. We pray for their family, Lord God. We yes, thank you, Lord God, for that hedge of protection, Lord yes, God, we've been doing in this week, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, to continue, Lord God, show yes. that you are the way. Lord God, continue demonstrating your love, your tender uh, care for each and every one of us. We pray, Father God, for every officer in this branch of Zion. We pray for our ushers. We pray for these men, Father God, as they would lift up their voices to heaven, Father God. Asking you, Lord God, to continue to use the fellowship of more Baptist Church, Lord God, to bring increase to the growth of the kingdom of God, Lord God. Let us start right here in this community called more. We ask you, Lord God, to continue to bless, Lord God, all of the transport. We thank you for Brother Cheney. Yes. Lord God, time to use him in spite of us. We ask you, Lord God, to use each of us, Lord God, in the midst of our various uses for your glory, Father God. As we thank you, as we give you praise, Lord God, we ask only, Lord God, that your will be done yes. in our lives, Father God. We pray for the President of these United States. We pray for our troops at home and abroad. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and those who love. We ask you, Father God, to continue, Lord God, to open doors. Lord God, not only for the war, but for the kingdom of God. Right. Open doors, Father God, that those that still exist in the dying world will see that there is life eternal in Christ Jesus. Father God, we ask you now, Lord God, as we close this morning, that you touch each and every one of us. Where we are. Oh God, where we are, you know where we are. Continue to open our wisdom, our understanding, Lord God, that we may grow into where you would have us to be. Yeah. Lord God, as we give you the praise, as we give you the glory. Father God, we know everyone suffers, one shape, one moment, or another, but we know who reigns supreme. Father God, so we give it all. We plead the blood of Jesus to Christ upon this day, upon this service, and upon all of the transpiring in these walls. Have your way in this sanctuary, every sanctuary, Lord God, that has its doors open this day. As we give you thanksgiving and everything, we glorify you today. In Jesus' name, we do pray that the will is done. Amen. Amen.
faith in God. Amen. Amen. Don't fool me, man. You have faith in God. Yes. God is a good God. We don't need trials and tribulations. It, it, it's, it's to build our faith in God. God has seen you through one storm, and then He sees you through another storm. Yes. Then yes. your faith should be increased in God. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He's the same God who was in your last storm. Yes. Same God is in your present storm. The yes. same God is going to be on the other side of the storm. Yeah. And that's how we get stronger in Christ Jesus. Uh, then you can't keep on lifting the same old weight because you don't know how much weight you can take. But as you continue to lift, you can go on. You can get stronger and stronger. Then when you go back to that other old weight that you said, just think right here, ain't nothing right here. So when God brings things to you and when life happens, because life be happening, you all know. Uh, we be in a place where, come on, devil, with your best shot. Because I, I serve a God who can do all things for faith. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, let us turn now. All of us are standing at this time. Uh, turn your hymn books to selection number 10. Selection number 10. How I love Jesus.
Then they ex sent a, another extension to this that says, we extend a special invitation for your deacons, deaconess, and trustees who will be recognized on Tuesday evening. On Wednesday, they will recognize missionaries and hospitality. And then on Thursday, you young adults and you deacons. So those are uh, activities that they will uh, serve on those given nights. This comes from the Mount Calvary Baptist Church over in d -Lit, and they will be um, celebrating the 13th pastoral anniversary of Reverend Dr. Gerald Hugh Brent. So uh, Reverend Dr. Anthony Chandler Chal and the City Street Baptist Church will be the guests for this special occasion. This will be on June the 9th, which is today at 2 p.m. Okay, those are the correspondence sets from area churches. If we look at our list uh, on, on today, uh, our, not today, but at 7 p.m. on tomorrow, the United Churches will have their meeting at Rocky Branch. 7 p.m. tomorrow evening, 7 p.m. for United Churches gathering. That's the quarterly uh, meeting. On the 13th, I said that we would be at Grady River Bible for St. Peter. I want to go back to the food bag up at the top. We were truly blessed this week as we worked the food bag uh, personally. I'd like to say, and I know the other workers that are here, they could personally uh, add the same remark that I am going to say. We truly had a blessed time. We served approximately 18 families uh, on the first week. We have two weeks of doing that. We thank each of you for your hours spent. We give a shout out to Deacon Carpenter. God bless him. Amen. Amen. Great job. He took that shopping cart and he went through there. <laughs> Him and Sister Carpenter, she was putting it in there and he was pushing the cart. Then we have uh, Sister Terry. We thank you for volunteering from your job. Amen. Thank you. Uh, then we have Reverend Khan who came up. Amen. Working with us. And Sister June. Amen. We have one more week to go. We'll finish out the days that's coming up this week. So, uh, and it wasn't really hard, hard work. We really enjoyed ourselves uh, sharing in that special time together and being a blessing to others. Amen. So that was really unique. So then we look at our Father's Day and all these different activities that's coming down the line on our uh, program. So we're hoping that you will keep your program with you so that you'll know these uh, activities that are coming up along the way so that we can be prepared for them. We can't forget so that, you know, that's, that's normal, that's natural. That's the thing. Look at your revival news and your church anniversary. Keep it especially for that. So you'll know, and if you want to send it on the lamp, you can put it in your envelope, and the trustee ministry will take care of that and direct it in the right places. So that is what we will be, uh, we will govern ourselves by for this year coming up. Uh, for, uh, we say happy birthday to Deacon Taylor today. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for saying another year. Amen. Then we say uh, for the other upcoming birthdays, Brother Jeremy and Patience. Amen. Yeah. Anniversaries that have uh, come and passed. Then we uh, uh, Brother Williams and Brother Ronnie, and then uh, Sister Knox is keeping up with her birthday and her name so that she can remember the uh, month of June. So we thank you for having a birthday on the 20th, and she'll celebrate her. 
we are very thankful for the good news of little, I call her little Darian, that she, she made it through. Yes, Scott. She made it through. She was on the right side of the road at that given time. To Brother Neil, who say our prayer concerns are still with you and with the friends and the rest of home. Those are all the announcements that I have to share with you today. Uh, and we trust and pray that all will be well with each of you and that we will be blessed in the days to come. Amen. 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 Let's give our prayers some love. Yeah. As you all know, so much is happening in the life of our church. Uh, we have to kind of keep up with everything. I want to thank all those at the food bank. Uh, Y'all don't like taking pictures, but I want you all to take pictures so you can send it to me. So we put it on our social media page. Okay. okay. All right. Give them to a uh, social media person, uh, first lady, so we can put those up. Amen. And one thing in the back of all that you do in the life of this church here at Memorial Baptist Church. I uh, just want to make sure the homecoming committee, uh, I will be preaching. But uh, get with uh, Valerie and Terry. They are the chairpersons of the homecoming. I'm not voluntarily, y'all, okay? <laughs> Don't look at me like that with that tone of voice. Uh, I'm voluntarily, y'all, and uh, we, 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 we'll go from there. Amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor to your left and right, look them in the eye, and say, You look good this morning. <laughs> Amen. The Lord does a cheerful girl. Okay, my homecoming committee is. June Knox, Leon Williams, Valerie Tucker, Mike Green, Olivia, and you get a pass, uh, Terry. You're not on this committee. So let me say that again. June Knox, Leon Williams, Valerie Tucker, Mike Green, and Olivia. So you all need to have a meeting, get together, and uh, just do what y'all want to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's give it time, you all.
understanding will be led in our scripture class via the general knowledge.
never lost the patience. Amen. 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 Let's give the amen some love. It's good to see uh, Deacon Pedro singing with the man again. Let's give us some love. Spirit of Christ is well with us on today. We thank Him for this point in time, this important opportunity to stand yet again behind this sacred desk. Do not take it lightly that God has allowed us to be here on today. Give God honor and praise on today. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our yes. side, where would we be? To Reverend Collins, to Reverend Chain, to our deacons, our deaconess, our uh, trustees, and our official members. And those who are viewing with on Facebook and YouTube, we greet you in the only name that matters, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. His word from the Lord and can be found again. If you will turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 11. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 11, the New International Version of the Bible, it reads thusly. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. Wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Yes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Yes. The grass willows and the flower of their faith the way, but the word of our God shall remain forever. The time is about us on today. I did preach, teach, and talk from the subject entitled, When Pride Gets in the Way. When Pride Gets in the Way. Turn to your neighbor to your left and right, look them in the eye, look them like they owe you some money. Say, no, don't say that, say, don't let pride get in your way. Let us pray. Turn to God our fathers, once again I come before you, Lord. Praising your holy and your righteous name. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings of the day. Thank you for your covering, your grace, and yes. your mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness of sins of omission and commission. Now, Lord, we ask that blessings as we uh, preach this sermon, Heavenly Father, that this is something uh, what we say that will draw us closer to thee, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, have thine own way. We be ever careful to give your name all the honor, praise, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. When pride gets in the way. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, I believe that all of us here have pride in ourselves. One way or another, we have pride in ourselves. That some may think more highly of themselves than what they ought to. If you came from meager beginnings and now you are on the top, if you don't watch it, pride may slip in. That because you may live in a certain zip code or drive a particular car or walk or, 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 or work in a certain company, you may be prideful. Because you have a certain title or a certain position, you may think more of yourself than what you ought to. I have often run into people in the city who think because they live in an affluent neighborhood, because they live in a certain part of the city, because their last name is of a certain family, they think that they are the chip and the dip, if you will. Have you ever known someone from their childhood and now that you see them now that they are grown, you don't even recognize them? Because you can't even stomach them because they are filled with pride and with arrogance. You remember them when? You remember them when they had nothing. You remember them when they looked like nothing. You remember them when they had no money. You remember them when they didn't have a stable home, when they didn't have a car, a boo, a bay, a child, a spouse. You remember them before the title, before the position, before the promotion, before the clothes, the cars, and the cash. You remember them. And it's sad to say that some people, they think that they pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. But I'm here to give a mandate, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? 
that we are not where we are because of what we've done. We are not where we are because of our education. We are not where we are because of uh, the community that we come from. It's only by the grace of God that you are where you are today. Yes. But if you really knew their story, you will find out that some of them had things that everything that's glitter is not gold. So everything that looks on the outside is not what it is on the inside. People are going through hell, but they can come in with their hell uh, laid down and fried and laid to the side, and they look good, but they're going through trauma in their life. Amen. But then the truth be told, we all have had some things that we're dealing with privately that we don't want to come out publicly. All of us have thorns in our sides. All of us have a scab or a scratch or two in our life. If it's not your health, then it's your spouse. If it's not your spouse, it's your children you're dealing with. If it's not your children you're dealing with, then it's your grandchildren. If it's not your grandchildren, then it's your siblings. If it's not your siblings, it's your relatives. If it's not your job, it's your car. If it's not your refrigerator, then the dryer goes out. If it's not the oven, then the hole comes in the roof. If it's not the roof, then it is the window. If it's not the organization you belong to, then it's the church. It's always something that we're going through. But we all deal with issues, problems, and thorns and scabs in our lives. But we uh, shouldn't allow pride to come up in our lives. You would think, well, what would make somebody be so prideful if they're going through hell and all the stuff that we go through? Yes, people still are prideful even in moments of tri uh, uh, trials and tribulations. And if we're going to deal with this, I want to lift up these three quick things. I know summertime, everybody's dressed and relaxed. I got a, a golf tea time at a certain time. I ain't going to tell y'all what time it is, but I got a golf tea time at a certain time. Uh, but I'm not going to rush God because God don't rush when it comes to me. God is always with us. First, uh, we must know that hurt will humble you. Secondly, we must know uh, we must humble ourselves and people will help you. Third and lastly, when you humble yourself, God will bless you. All right. It's simple. Let me back that up because I know I see some people taking some notes. No. So first, we must know that hurt will humble you. Secondly, when you humble yourself, uh, people will help you. Then third and lastly, when you humble yourself, God will bless you. When pride gets in your way. As in our text today, we have uh, the commander named Naaman, uh, who is a general of the army of the king of Aram. Uh, the Bible says that uh, he was a great man uh, in the eyesight of the king. Not the king of kings, but he was a great man in the eyesight of the king. He was highly regarded because uh, uh, through him, the Lord has given victory uh, to Aram. Uh, the Bible says uh, he was a valiant soldier of what he had leprosy. I say what he had leprosy. He had it going on when he had leprosy. Naaman was a shot caller in the community if you will. He was known throughout the land. He had a favor with the king. Not the king of kings but he had favor with Aram the king. And sometimes when people call your names and people pet you on the back. When people give you so much attention, you got to be careful because sometimes you can get the big head. Right. And sometimes we can get the big head when people are always pinning us on our backs. Right. And then we think that we are untouchable at times because you've done this or you've done that. And because you're great in this area or you're great in that area, you got to watch out because pride will step up in your life. How many of us know that uh, we, uh, we are uh, uh, one tragedy away from uh, something going wrong in your life? You're okay. one tragedy away from the wind being taken out of your cell. You're one tragedy from the rug being pulled from up under you. Yes. One issue away from being on the mountaintop to being in the valley low. One situation from being the shot caller to being shot at. Uh, uh, I had a close encounter where we had a close encounter. Some of you all know about it. Others of you all may not know. But this Tuesday, 
You all know I was down at Hampton at the Hampton Ministers Conference, but I had to come home to do uh, 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 the city council meeting because the mayor's, uh, his uh, daughter graduated from St. Joseph. So he said, Mr. Vice Mayor, I'm gonna have to get you to run the meeting. I said, man, I'm down here in Hampton. I was gonna, I was gonna let y'all know. He said, no, man, I need for you to come up because if I'm not there, you're supposed to be there. So I come back up here and I, we do the meeting. We're at the end of the meeting. I get a text from my wife. She said, are you coming home after the meeting? I know you're going back to Hampton because I'm going to do what we call a turn and burn. You all know what that is. You go somewhere and you come right back. And I said, yes, I'm going to come home because I miss you, boy. Yeah, I'm coming in. What's up? I said, is everything all right? And she says, no. Darian has been in an accident. She says, I'm on my way up down in five right now. I said, what's going on? Is she okay? She said, I don't know, but I'm just trying to get to her. So, you know, and at city council, everybody talking about this, that, and other. So I leaned over to who the one that was doing all the talking. I said, look, man, you got to wrap this thing up. <laughs> he said, Dad, this is my last comment. I said, yeah, this is going to be your last comment because it was just a work meeting. We won't vote on no anything, anything like that. So then all of a sudden, I get these series of pictures that's coming in. She tells me what happens, and Darian is going up 95 north, and there's a wheel that comes off a vehicle coming 95 south, and it jumps the Jersey turn uh, wall, and it hits her car, and it hits not just the front of the car, but it hits the window where she is driving. The airbag did not come out. Nothing that, like the whole top of the roof is off. The only thing that's standing that looks like her piece ever is where she is sitting. She's out of the car, they got pictures of her. I was down in her car, she pulls over and she gets out of her car. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, if it had not been for the favor of God, if it had not been for God's protection, where would we be? My head, my ego, everything was popped in my head. Because we can't get the big head. I was writing this sermon before you know, that even happened, but God just dropped that in my spirit. If you can't get the big head, God would have some things to come in our lives that will humble us at times. Sometimes He won't just humble us for us, but He'll take somebody else or some situation in your life that we will humble you. He'll take a, a loved one that we will humble you. He'll take a, a friend that we will humble you. He'll take a job that we will humble you. He'll do some things that pop your bubble and say, you ain't all that. You ain't never dressed up dust. And we all are dust. We all are dirt. Formed in his image. So, here it is. Uh, the general that has favor with the king who has won battles and is suffering in silence with this disease called leprosy. Leprosy was a disease that was start off with a simple rash. A simple spot, and then it was spread, and then all of a sudden you'll get sick, and then it go into your bloodstreams, and then you'll lose your voice, your vocal cords will go eventually, and then sometimes your finger will fall off, or either your ear will fall off, it'll affect your body, and then eventually death. It's like the modern day cancer, if you will. Back in the day, they were trying to cover up uh, uh, this disease called leprosy by putting on clothes so people wouldn't be able to see your scalp or, or whatever it is that you're going through. Because that's what we do in life. When we are going through stuff, we try to cover it up. All right. We cover it up with makeup. We cover it up with trying to act like we all that. And normally hurt people always hurt other people. When somebody is nasty all the time, when somebody always got a certain disposition about something, that's because they're going through something themselves. They don't have nowhere else to let it out on. They can't let it out on one who's beating them at home. So they let it out on somebody in, in the job. They can't let it out uh, uh, with their family or whoever's going through it. They let it out with their friends. Hurt people always hurt other people. Can I get a witness? You will lose these things and then eventually death. Back in the day, they would cover it up uh, uh, with clothes and things of that nature. And if the truth be told, many of us have had uh, and, and are suffering right now in silence with something. I didn't step in, I just didn't slip you a DM right there. 
And some of us are su suffering with something. You ain't got to tell me. All of us are dealing with something in our lives. Yes. It may not be with us in particular, but it may be with some, a family member that you love. Yes. We all are going through something from time to time. Uh, like I said earlier, either you're in the storm or you're coming out of the storm or either you're on the other side of the storm. All of us deal with issues at times. Yes. A health issue that nobody knows but you and the doctor. You're dealing with something. A child that you continue to pray for, but instead of getting better, they get worse. You're dealing with something. A spouse that you really don't even like. You love them, but you don't like them. You're dealing with something. A job that you don't even want to go to. You go to, you have a job, but you don't want to go to that job. You're dealing with something. A secret that you or that you have in your house or in your situation that may cause embarrassment when you get it up, you're dealing with something inside. All right. We all struggle with issues in our lives. When pride gets in the way, first we must know that hurt will humble you. Somebody say hurt. Hurt. Somebody say humble. Humble. Naaman is a general. He has medals. He has favor with the king. Married with a uh, service, and he has it going on on the looks of it. On the outside, it seems like he has everything going on. The Bible does not tell us say that uh, uh, he's prideful. It doesn't say that he's prideful, but you got to read between the lines of the text. You'll find out later on where his pride comes up. If people were to know his real situation, his real story, how would they treat him? That he is uh, a leopard, that he has this illness, being a leopard, leading the king's men, having service and telling them where to go and what to do, and here you are with a leopard. You know how people do? You can't tell me nothing because you got this going on in your life. You know how do. And it takes a servant of his wife to help him with his healing. And naturally, it takes a slave to help him. Yeah. Someone that he's over top of yeah. was trying to help him. That's the reason why people, uh, uh, this, this thing when it comes to this abortion thing, they don't want the numbers to get lopsided because they know, they think that we're going to treat them like the way we treated them. But here it is, right here in the text. This servant, this slave girl, helps her master. We must be careful how we treat the least, the lost, and the left up. Right. We must be careful how we treat those who we think that are less than us. Those who, who don't have letters in front or behind their name. Those who grew up on the other side of the track. Those who don't look like the norm or who's outside of the fringes or outside of the margin. Those who, we must be careful who we entertain when we entertain strangers because hurt will humble you. Right. Name and wife servant was taken, uh, taken in, in battle as a slave. Now this is a slave girl because she was taken in battle. The Bible says she was a servant, but really she was a slave. Yeah. You know, they say servant because, you know, they're walking around, they're smiling, but you know they want to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. But they say servant, like they're trying to say that our slaves or our ancestors were indigenous servants. No, we want to, we didn't want to serve nobody. We didn't want to pick no cotton. The devil is a liar. They call her service in the battle. But no, she was a slave. Uh, and taken in battle to serve the general's wife. And she tells them about uh, the prophet. The prophet. She tells them about the man of God. She says, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure her, cure him of his disease. Right. So Naaman uh, went to his master, because he had a master too, he went to the king and said, can I go to see this prophet? And the king says, yes, you can go. And in, in other words, I mean, and then he also says, I'm going to send a letter on your behalf to the other king. All right, all right. Sends a letter on his behalf. Uh, this hurt that Naaman is going through has to be humbling to him. Right. Here it is. Uh, there's no doctor that I can go to. But here it is. It's a slave girl who's carrying water, who's taking care of my wife. Bless her. Who's taking care of my wife. Uh, uh, here it is. Uh, she is uh, the one who is going to tell me where I can get my deliverance. But I want to tell us, brothers and sisters, that we must be careful how we deal with people. Yes. 
is that you can get your deliverance or you can get a word from God from almost anybody. As long as they are bathing and they know the word of God. You can get a, the word of God from a child. You can get a word of God from a woman. You can get a word of God from anybody who knows the Lord. She knows this promise. All right. This hurt that Naaman is going through has to be humbling for him. He is getting advice from and instruction from a slave woman. So it's humbling to him. That we go through hurt, it will humble us. When there's pain, it will humble you. When there's loss, it will humble you. Yes. When there is no answer to the question, it will humble you. Have you ever been in a situation that you was in control of? But all of a sudden, when you lost control of it, uh, you had to go to somebody else to find out what the answer is for it. That's humbling to us. Yeah. That you may be gifted in a lot of areas, but you don't have all the gifts. Because at times, we have to go to somebody else for our deliverance. We have to go to somebody else to get the answer. We have to go to somebody else for the cure, if you will. Pain, hurt, and loss will humble us. Naaman was hurting. Naaman was in pain. Naaman uh, don't want to lose his life to this disease called leprosy. He must humble himself and take advice from this slave girl. Don't let pride get in your way. First, we must know that a hurt will humble you. But secondly, we must humble ourselves and people will help you. Yes. Humble yourself and people will help you. Naaman had to humble himself so that uh, he could be helped by this girl. So he could be healed, so that he could be blessed. He wanted to be helped, he wanted to be healed, and he wanted to be blessed. After the servant told him about the prophet, he humbled himself and asked his master, could I go to the prophet? That he didn't let uh, his pride get in his way, firstly in the text. He didn't let his pride get in his way. He didn't say, no, I am the general. No, they sent him to me and all this stuff. No, he wanted to go and get his healing. And many of us will spite our noses from our face. Yes, I said it. Many of us uh, want our healing in a certain way. Yes. That we want answers to our questions, but we uh, want them answered in a certain way. We want our healing in a certain way. Yes. Uh, what a shame to be prideful to have blessings right in front of you, but you don't like the way it is packaged. For example, I would take advice from her, but I won't take it from him. I would take advice from the pastor, but I won't take it from the deacon. I, won't, I would take advice from the doctor, but I won't do what my wife asked me to do. I would take advice from the white man, but I won't I take advice from the brother. That pride will stop your blessing. What is going on in your life that pride can stop your blessings? What is going on in your situation that you're so prideful uh, that it has stopped your blessings? Is it arrogance? Is it superiority? You think you all that the chip in the diff? Uh, is it uh, your right? You think because you of a certain pedigree that you have the right to act the way that you act? Is it uh, uh, your affluence? You think you're the shot caller, the big daddy, the make daddy, if you will, the baller? You think you don't have to? Uh, uh, anybody can tell you anything. What will make people not help you get uh, to where God wants you to be? Because you know God uh, blesses us through other people. People. I say God blesses us through other people. Yes. Think about all the blessings that God has given you. It came through somebody else. Okay. It came from, you got a loan from the bank. It came from God. Yeah. Uh, you got a new God, a new car. It came from God. Right. Uh, the doctors uh, 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 gave you some medicine. It came from the Lord. Yeah. All those blessings came from God through other people. Yes. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Yes. If you are humble, people will help you. Yes. Now I often say that your gift will make room for you. Yes. But your humility will keep you in those rooms. Yes. And I always have to pop my, 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 my sanctified uh, mind and I have to pop my bubble because God has been good to me. God has blessed me. God has put me in rooms that most of my friends have never been in. But I have to pop my bubble and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Then your humility would keep you in those rooms. Yes. First, we must know hurt will humble us. 
Secondly, we must know, humble yourselves and people will help you. Third and lastly, when you humble yourself, God will bless you. Yes, Fast forward in the text, so the king has sent a letter on the behalf of the general Naaman. He has sent gifts. He sent ten, uh, uh, ten talents of silver, uh, 600 shackles of gold, and ten sets of clothing. He wants to try to buy uh, the man of God, if you will. Some preachers, you can buy them. Some preachers will come and preach for you if you uh, mess around and you, you, you give a certain honorary and things of that nature. Some things you, you can buy people with, you know. Uh, some people buy, uh, uh, you know, if they want to get a little physical with somebody, they'll try to buy some. Y'all know what that means. Y'all know what that means. But some people will buy some things. But the man of God don't work that way. Yes. God's blessings don't work their way. How many of us know uh, we can't buy uh, our blessings that God will give us? God's grace and mercy, it is free. All you got to do is confess and believe, and you have his grace and his mercy. Yes. And we have the favor of God on our lives. And you, can, and you and I can't purchase our blessings. So Naaman took his chariot to the door of Elijah, the prophet's house. And he did not even come in the house. Now, this is a bad property. He didn't even come out. Matter of fact, he sent word. And he sent word, he sent a message telling him to dip himself in the river Jordan seven times. And his flesh would come back like a newborn baby. But here's the pride right here. But Naaman went away angry because. He thought that the man of God should at least come out and call on his God and wave his hand across the spot and he will be here. So he want to be blessed in a certain way. Yeah. And sometimes we miss our blessings because we want to be blessed in a certain way. Yeah. In a yeah. So he missed his blessings the first time. Uh, he wants to, uh, we want to, the Lord to bless us in a certain way, uh, but God blesses us uh, the way that he wants us to be blessed. But how many of us know, and how many of us can testify, any way you bless me, Lord, I will be satisfied. Just as long as you're blessing me, just as long as I know you're in the blessing business, I'll be satisfied. Pride will hold you back uh, from your blessings. Pride will hurt you. Pride will cause pain in your life. But uh, he had a delay action. He said, I need to go get this blessing right here. You have to come to a place in your life where you can't let pride get in your way. Let's your pride get in your way. Naaman went in and, and dipped in the joint seven times. He dipped in that muddy water seven times. It was other uh, rivers all around him that was cleaner than those rivers, but the man of God told him to dip in there seven times. And as our obedience in sight is a sacrifice unto the Lord. So the man of God wanted to make sure that he was obeying the word of God. That obedience is better than sacrifice. That yes, we thank God for his grace and his mercy, and we ought to. We thank God for the unmerited favor, and we ought to. But God wants us to get in the place that we are obeying his word so that he can bless us even the more. The river Jordan was a muddy uh, river, but it was a special place because... In the New Testament, the river Jordan, y'all know where I'm going. In the New Testament, in the river Jordan, uh, there was a man named John the Baptist yeah. who baptized in the river Jordan. But there was a special person who was baptized in the river Jordan, and his name is Jesus. And when Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan, uh, a dove came off, and the voice of God said, This is my beloved son, in whom I wear pleased. And uh, if our Savior could go in that water, then he could go in that water. If our Deliverer could go in that water, then he can go in that water. If our sacrificial Lamb of God could go in that water, then he can go in that water. He dipped seven times, which indicates that this cleansing was one, a progression. It was a progression cleansing. No, his healing did not come on the first dip. It did not come on the second dip. It did not come on the sixth dip. But on the seventh dip, it came. And this shows us that we need to be praying through in season and out of season. That you may not get your healing the first time. But 
keep on praying because God is doing his thing. He's giving you while you're praying. He's giving you. Is there anybody here who wants to thank God for the gift? He woke you up this morning. Gift. Clothing your right man. Gift. Food on your table. Gift. He's reporting the health and strength. Gift. Orchestrate everything, make sure everything went. Brother was coming, man. Good job, Deputy Hill. Good job. And all I can say is, to God be the glory. Amen. If somebody pay your compliment, you better say, to God be the glory. When somebody said, Anna Boy, to God be the glory. When somebody said, you did a good job, to God be the glory. Because yes. all honor, all praise belong to the Lord. Yes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Those of the church are now open. We'll know the doors of the church. Man, women, or girl, but let us not know Jesus in the part of their sins. We ask that you give your life to Christ with the peace of
And I want to thank, so we have a crew, we have a crew, and I want to thank the crew for working on, if you all want to know what that is, that's our sound system back there. So there's a crew, it's not the men's ministry, but there's a, 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 a crew uh, that's putting that up, and, uh, and they're going to uh, fix that up, so we're going to move everything back there to up there. Because uh, once we move everything up there, then we'll put our monitors up and everything, and we're just trying to, you know, get up with the 21st century, century. and we still going to look like a church. You know, I'm not going all smoke screens and lights and all that stuff like that, but uh, we thank uh, uh, them for doing uh, the Richard's responsibility of, of doing the work and things of that nature. We want to thank you all uh, for your gifts and your tasks and your offering because this right here comes out of our general fund. So we thank God for all, you know, we're doing things around here. Since we've been here, we've done a whole lot in a short period of time. That, there's plenty, plenty more to be done. So, amen? amen. Let us all stand all in the same prayer.
I grew up on the like I came down a little bit, okay? Okay. Please. Yeah. I had it. Did you come up with something yellow again? You 